Good morning, friends. I'm outside in my backyard. It feels like we're gathering for outdoor worship, which we kind of are since I'm outside and meeting with you all for worship. Uh, today is Good Friday, and it was an honor and uh, really meaningful to worship with you on Wednesday evening. And we set this time aside today to be with Jesus. Yeah. 
On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. 
He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb as she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbanai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. When it was that when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. John 20, 1 through 20. This is an odd Easter with all of us practicing physical distancing. We're not free to celebrate Easter in the ways we normally would. A lot of markers for, of Easter for us aren't happening this, this year. Worshiping together, gathering as family, Easter egg hunts and our annual pancake breakfast. All things we do in celebration of Christ's resurrection. For almost 2000 years, Easter has been celebrated. And as the power and influence of the church grew, so did the extravagance of the celebration. But for the first followers of Jesus, the first Easter wasn't a party or a, or a joyous worship service. It was a day that began with fear and uncertainty. Jesus had been executed two days earlier and the disciples were still filled with shock and grief. Not only were they grieving the loss of Jesus, but they were fear fearful of their own lives because of their association with Jesus. When Mary goes to the tomb, she finds it empty and fears that the grave has been despoiled. Even when Peter and John show up, they find the linen wrappings of Jesus' burial. They aren't really certain what's happened. Mary mistakes Jesus for the gardener. The disciples go back and lock themselves in their house. The resurrection of Jesus hasn't really resonated with them yet. And when it does, it's a joyous surprise, not a premeditated celebration. Even as it's hard to not be able to celebrate in our normal rhythms, perhaps it's a good reminder to us now. We are isolated and often fearful. We feel the loss and grief of both our celebration and of the ways our world feels turned upside down. But in this, we share some of the emotion and experience of those first followers of Jesus. We are invited, as they were, to celebrate the life of Jesus in the midst of grief and doubt and fear. We are given an opportunity in a very different way to consider what it means that Jesus has conquered death and is alive. To our questions from this devotional, how might this reality change our lives and ways forward? How is Jesus showing up in our locked rooms of fear and how do we celebrate and rejoice in Jesus' life? Go in peace, friends.